With the introduction of Fortuna, we also got a batch of brand new weapons, including an automatic burst rifle based on sentient technology. Hey guys, hello and welcome back, as always my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 10 primary weapon, the Batacore. I'm gonna be covering something cheap and affordable, something anybody can build, but of course we also have the classic end game setup with a Riven. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides take a new player friendly approach, simply because there's a ton of information here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. But you might be a veteran of the game and not interested in all this new player business. You're invited to skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Baracor. Let's begin by taking a look at how the weapon behaves without any mods equipped and for that I'm gonna need a couple of guinea pigs. Now from my usual assortment of Corrupted Heavy Gunner with Corrupted Heavy Gunner I'm gonna be spawning in some brand new enemies from Orvalis because I heard some of you guys been having trouble with these. The Batacore is an automatic burst rifle and per shot you're gonna be consuming 2 ammo so effectively you're getting a magazine size of 30. This is a projectile based weapon so you will have to contend with the travel time. As for the secondary fire, take a look at my crosshairs, you will see 2 black dashes and 1 white dash. That's tied into the weapon's charge mechanic, you can't fire alternative fire unless you have at least 1 out of the 3 charges. If you wanna get charges, all you gotta do is kill enemies like so. So as you can see now I got 2 charges and we're gonna be getting the final one as well. That means that my secondary fire is fully charged up and it's an optic or like shot with 2 meters worth of punch through. And it does deal a truck and a half worth of radiation damage, pure radiation damage. As soon as you use your secondary fire, all of your charges will be consumed and you can use it with one or two charges but of course the damage won't be as great as with all three. So bear that one in mind. There's one more thing to the secondary fire. Apparently upon impact with a surface or an enemy it will detonate in a 5 meter area that will deal the same amount of damage as the beam itself. But from my testing it looks like the area is a whole lot more smaller than that so there might still be some bugs here and there. This is still a pretty new weapon. That being said, let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. Mod capacity for the Batacore is gonna be 60 out of 60 and if your Batacore has only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and install the Auto King Catalyst. This one can be found from alerts, invasions or if you're lucky from the daily sortie and you can also pay 20 plat to have this one installed. Next, my weapon has been formatted a total of 6 times but this was done only for the purpose of testing. For the weapon build I'm recommending you guys 4 forma should do it, just simply add 4 V or Madurai symbols. Next I want to talk about accuracy on the battle core. We got 25 for primary and 100 for secondary fire mode. And there's one thing which I want to clear up really quickly. Even though the charge shot may appear to be like an optic core shot, it does not function like a beam weapon. For example, if I was to add multi shot on the weapon, something like split chamber, my shot status chance is getting increased as the weapon will be firing multiple projectiles out of the charge shot. And that does not happen with any beam weapon. Also negative accuracy effects, something like heavy caliber. Now this one will have an ugly effect both on primary and secondary fire modes. Many of my shots simply landing completely off the crosshairs. And for that reason I'm not recommending heavy cal. It's still gonna be good enough for close range shots though so bear that one in mind. Critical chance is sky high both for primary and secondary fire modes 32% and 34% respectively and we also have high crit multis at 2.4x and 3.0x. This is by all intents and purposes a true blue crit weapon. When it comes to the fire rate this is where the battle core suffers. 3.57 for primary fire mode is simply not enough especially considering that we want to get as many charge shots off as we can so Increasing the fire rate on the battle core from my point of view would be the number one thing to do. The magazine size is 60 but effectively 30 since we will be firing 2 projectiles at a time, noise alarming, a reload of 2.0 which is pretty solid and a riven disposition of 3 out of 5. Now this one is the default riven disposition the developer awards any brand new weapon. As for the status chance you got 18% in primary fire mode and secondary only 8% but this one hits like a truck. 18% from my point of view is solid enough and a trigger is automatic burst so again you're not gonna have to spam your button you simply keep it pressed down. The default damage is gonna be puncture which will help with heavily armored targets and magnetic which will nuke down shields and considering we're gonna be spending a whole bunch of time on Orvalis this one will come in very useful. The charge mode does not list its damage for some weird reason and if you want to know the values exactly head on over to the wiki. Know that it's pure radiation. One more thing, the charge rate is 0.4 seconds and this one is automatic like you have on the Ferox for example so you're not gonna have to keep your trigger pressed down. 
Finally, let's start slapping on some mods. Serration, 165% extra damage, and I leave heavy caliber up to you guys. Next, we're gonna go to multi shot, the best thing on everything. Split chamber, 90% multi shot, and vigilante armament, 60% multi shot. Now, considering the weapon is primarily a crit weapon, we are gonna be getting a nice benefit out of that set bonus as well. 5% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Though that one should only be viewed as the cherry on top, you shouldn't base your decision on the set bonus alone. Next, critical chance and critical damage, since this is the highlight of the weapon, point strike together with vital sense. And check the stats now. 80% critical chance with point strike alone for primary and 85 for secondary. And we got huge multipliers as well, 5.3 on primary and 6.6 .6 on secondary fire mode. Next, we gotta decide what we're gonna do with the weapon. We can go for straight elemental or we can go for a bleed build through hunter munitions. I'm gonna be showcasing both options and you get to decide whatever you prefer. Initially, we're gonna go elemental and elemental damage should always be applied depending on circumstances. Where are you going and who are you fighting? For example, perhaps you're heading down to Orvalis to hunt a whole bunch of corpus and in that case I would build gas or toxin as it bypasses their shields entirely and deals damage to their health. Also, the weapon does deal default magnetic damage so it's gonna be able to take care of their shields without any problem at all. The Grenier, however, are still the toughest targets in Warframe, despite appearances, and against Grenier you gotta take into account the armor type, Alloy, which is weak to radiation damage, which the weapon does do on its secondary fire mode, and Ferrite armor, which is weak to corrosive damage. Against Grenier, more often than not, your safest bet will be to build corrosive, which is the elemental combo between electricity and toxin. So let's build some, shall we? Should I go for the 60-60 mods or the 90 mods? That's gonna depend on the content that you're doing, to be honest. If you're heading down to Orvalis, the highest level bounty there is something like level 60-ish, so I would simply go for the 90 mods. However, if you're going endurance run and all blah 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 or hitting level 100 plus, then I would recommend you go for the 60-60 mods. High voltage, 60% electricity and 60% status chance. Now this one is farmable from the game. The mission is called now Elgar on the planet Eris. You gotta find all the free secret caches, then upon extraction, you got a massive chance of 5% of getting this one or shell shock. I'm sorry guys. Honestly, the grind on Nyelgar is stupid bad. I would recommend you simply buy them with plat if you can afford it. If you can't afford it or don't want to buy it because of principles and all whatnot, simply use Stormbringer, the 90% electricity mod. And if you don't have this one, then you haven't been playing Warframe. Next, we're gonna be going to Toxin. This one is called Malignant for 60% Toxin and 60% status chance. Now, that one is a lot easier to obtain from Corrupted Vor in the Void. If not from the trade chat, you're looking at about 10 plat. We still have one more mod slot left on the weapon and this is what I like to call the option slot. Plug into this one whatever you feel comfortable with. It's always gonna be a lot more important to cater the weapon to your own individual playstyle, having fun with the bloody thing instead of just a little bit more damage. That said, I am gonna be recommending you a few good options. Shred or Prime Shred. The fire rate is fantastic on the battle core and the additional punch through will help with the primary fire rate. The secondary fire rate doesn't really need any additional punch through but it's not gonna harm the weapon either. So there you go. Especially if you guys got Prime Shred, that one will give you 55% fire rate and 2.2 meters worth of punch through. I don't have it, so boo hoo. Another option is gonna be a meme mod. Don't scream at me, please. Hammer shot. There we go. 60% critical damage and 40% status chance. The Beta Core is a heavy crit weapon, so more critical damage will have a fantastic effect on it. And the 40% status chance kind of patches up that low base status chance of 18%. When it comes to secondary fire mode, even in a setup such as this, you're only looking at 44% shot status chance. That said, my favorite approach is through fire rate on the Beta Core. I want to get more shots off faster so I get to use my secondary fire mode a whole lot more often because that one deals a whole lot more damage. So for fire rate mods we can go for something like Vigilante Fervor. Now this one only gives you 45% fire rate which is not a big deal but you can look forward to the 10% chance to enhance critical hits in case you couple it with Vigilante armaments. Another option would be Speed Trigger. This is always a solid choice, 60% fire rate, but my favorite remains Vile Acceleration. And this one will give you 90% fire rate at the cost of 15% damage. Now I'm fully aware that that 15% minus damage seems a little bit ominous, but it only takes away 15% away from your serration. Now that's not exactly how it functions, but it's best you think of it like that. By all intents and purposes, the negative on this one isn't really that big of a deal. And this is the initial build we're gonna be testing, so let's see if it's got any punch or not. 
Let's bump up the level. Level 120. Honestly, I feel this is a very good testing point, so we're gonna keep it to 120. So let's see what the weapon is capable of. After a couple of shots, since I removed some of the armor, the Batacore is gonna be able to absolutely nuke these high-level targets. The Corpus are not a threat, and these guys are level 120. And on uh, Orb Valis, you're not gonna be seeing level 120. So you're gonna be seeing something like 60-ish max if you wanna go for the highest level bounty. Now I got my uh, secondary fire mode fully charged, and if I am gonna use it, take a look at that. I took off about 30% off of that corrupted heavy gunner. If I was gonna use my primary fire mode just to remove some of its armor, then I can remove the last 50% of itself with my secondary fire mode or my charge shot. Now take a look at this. Beautiful, isn't it? The weapon hits like a bloody truck and there's nothing expensive on the build outside of high voltage, but drop it and simply use Stormbringer instead. Now there's one thing you should know about these new Corpus units. You guys been having some trouble with them and for good reason as well. Apparently, the stats they should have, the stats shown in the Simulacrum console thingy over here, don't really line up with reality. Apparently they have a whole lot more health than these numbers would indicate. So I think D still needs to tweak some things here and there. And that's gonna be performance with a normal average everyday build. You can go for something like this, but you can do better. With a crit slash build through Hunter Mumu. Yes, I really hate this one, but 30% chance to apply slash status on critical hit. And as you can see, I kept my mandatory mods. Serration, split chamber, point strike, vital sense. And while I'm not calling Vigilante Armaments mandatory, it will find its way onto many builds, simply because multi-shot currently in Warframe is a rather big deal. Next we can go for two approaches, we can go for Viral Damage, Viral on a status proc will be reducing the maximum health of a target to 50% for the duration of the Viral effect and that on a slash build is absolutely glorious or we can go for more Critical Chance and Critical Damage. Initially we're gonna be going for Viral, this time however we're gonna go for the 90 mods. I'm not interested in raising my status chance because I don't wanna proc anything like Puncture or Magnetic and Viral is fantastic because it doesn't need a thousand status procs like Corrosive does. One, two good ones will be more than enough. And I made 783 Viral on the weapon, which means it's proc priority number one, even though IPS have a four, has a four times greater chance at proccing over elemental types. One more time, same targets as before. Now let's see what the weapon can do. That's gonna be two shots. Now I don't have fire rate on my weapon. You can notice that straight off the bat the weapon is a whole lot more sluggish. But the slashes are there, huge slashes. And you also have the viral effect without any problem at all. If you're having trouble with getting consistent viral apps on your target, then simply go for the 60-60 mods instead of the 90 mods. From my point of view, it's not really worth it. And as you can see, the weapon can tear through high level targets with no problem at all. One shot on the target, huge slash together with Viral, absolutely bloody beautiful. Take a look at the values. A build such as this is unfortunately for me a whole lot more efficient and this is what I'm gonna be recommending to you guys. But this is not the only option to a slash build. We can go for more critical chance and critical damage because all of us are suckers when it comes to crit. Never mind. So we're gonna renounce Viral altogether and go for more crit chance and crit damage. Argon Scope, currently still very expensive, about 150 plat on the trade chat PC. And this one will mean that your critical chance is gonna be going way over 100%. Each and every shot that lands on a target is gonna be a crit, therefore each and every shot has that chance to proc Hunter Munitions. As for crit damage, we're gonna be getting it from Bladed Rounds. Now this one is an on-kill effect. I don't like on-kill effects, never did. However, in a mission you're gonna be getting plenty of kills, so the uptime should be just fine. 120% critical damage, which is the same amount as Vital Sense. And we're gonna be testing the weapon out like this. At least I don't have to worry about Vital slipping off the target anymore. Same targets as before. However, I'm gonna have to get a fast kill in order to get the buff from Bladed Rounds. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 shots on the target. Bleeds are sky high. We have 3,800 on a high and about 2,000 on a low. Take a look at that. The weapon can absolutely shred. But my problem remains that bloody fire rate. If I'm not having fun with the weapon, if I don't feel comfortable with it, then I'm simply not gonna use it. Here's secondary fire mode. 23,500 something bleed on a target. Absolutely bloody glorious. Now you guys might have noticed that some arcanes are proccing. I'm gonna show you in a second. They have nothing to do with primary, so we're not really um, affecting the results of the test in any way, shape or form. 
This is the build, however, that I'm gonna be recommending to you guys. If you want the most amount of damage you can get, then go for a slash build based on hunter munitions with more critical chance and critical damage. But if you don't have Argon scope, this is not me telling you go out and spend 150 plat. Simply use the viral setup we used earlier and you're gonna be doing just fine. Look at that damage. Absolutely bloody glorious. Very well, about those arcanes, I wouldn't want you guys to believe I cheated or anything, so let's see what my Loki has. I think it's something for shotguns, because Loki and shotguns, why the hell not? We go, we got Arcane Tempo with Arcane Avenger. Avenger did not proc because I need to be damaged for this one to proc, and Tempo only applies to shotguns. So, there you go. There's still one more thing which I want to show you guys, a Riven setup, and this one is a loner from a friend. He was crazy enough to pay 2000 something plat for a Battlecore Riven. Hey man, thank you very much for loaning me this one, we got critical damage and fire rate. Now I am grateful for that fire rate, honestly, it makes the weapon a lot more usable, but the ideal Battlecore Riven is critical damage, critical chance, multi-shot, harmless negative, and the harmless negative can be something like minus zoom, or minus IPS, because on the battle core you only have puncture. So if you get minus impact or minus uh, slash, for example, that's gonna be 100% harmless. And once again, this is a Hunter Munitions base build. The Riven took the spot of Vigilante Armaments. And just to make sure you guys don't dream of any benefits, there we go. We're gonna simply switch to an empty build. I do love my Super Speed Loki build. A Riven of Disposition Free, does it make a difference? It always makes a bloody difference, but that doesn't mean that the Batacore actually needs a Riven in order to be a competitive weapon. It will make a difference? Sure. If you love the weapon and you feel like spending a whole bunch of plat for a Riven, then by all means go right on ahead for it. I'll share a secret with you guys, I never spend more than 300 plat on a Riven, and I basically got whatever the hell I needed. Take a look at that. Huge slash is absolutely bloody beautiful. One shot from the secondary fire mode that was a slash of 60. 4,000 I believe, it was an orange slash. Now this weapon can definitely pack a punch and once again I do highly recommend it. The only problem I had with it was initially when I tested is the fact that it didn't have fire rate on it, but as soon as I put some fire rate on it, it worked absolutely bloody beautiful, because again I can fork out a whole lot more charge shots. And everybody loves the Opticor, right, or an Opticor like shot. The problem is the usability on that weapon. So the battle core will be a solid option and there's still one more thing which we should do, bump up everything with Warframe buffs and for that I'm gonna be using Lady Mirage Prime. Now let's take a look at them buffs. Rifle am 27% extra damage to rifles, now this is an aura so everybody in your party will be receiving this benefit and it is stackable times 4. From my point of view these amp auras are not exactly worth it as the benefit they provide is rather small but you can use coaction drift to further increase the value. If you know you're gonna be fighting Grenier, keep in mind that corrosive projection is always a better idea, but Rifle Lamp will grant its benefit regardless of the target. And corrosive projection is gonna be worthless if you're not gonna be fighting enemies that actually have armor, so bear that one in mind. Now let's talk about something a bit more impactful, Arcane. Arcane Rage are free. On headshot, 10% chance for plus 120% damage rifles for 16 seconds. Now I'm fully aware that this says rifle, but in actuality it's to all primary weapons, so bear that one in mind. You can farm this one from the third idol on down on Cetus and if you were to double stack Arcane Rage R3 you're not getting 240% extra damage, you're simply getting the 20% chance, so bear that one in mind. As for our second Arcane, I'm gonna go with Arcane Acceleration. If you choose to go for this one, you can drop your fire rate mod altogether. 60% is not exactly fantastic, but it's gonna work good enough. And it's on critical hit, 20% chance, and we do crit loads with a Batacore. Now there's one issue here, if I unpause these targets, everything is gonna go to hell in a handbasket as Grenier and Corpus don't exactly mix, but we're gonna do it anyway. And of course we're gonna be relying on Lady Mirage Prime to get our damage through the roof, her free ability for a massive damage increase as well as the clone. Now let's see what are these guys up to, as you can see the battle core is fully capable of murdering these high level targets. One thing that I forgot to mention, the secondary fire mode does not consume any ammo at all, take a look at that, absolutely beautiful. Tons and tons of damage, but the thing is, I am using some rather extreme Warframe buffs. Say cheese! Beautiful, isn't it? I highly recommend this weapon, just keep in mind that it does come with some negatives as well. It's a projectile based weapon at the end of the day, and not everybody likes that, you're gonna have to lead your targets. That also, you're kind of forced into building some fire rate from my point of view, so that's also kind of a negative. Other than that, the weapon is absolutely fantastic, and once again, it gets my seal of approval.
As always, my name is Bon Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you have any feedback for me or in case I missed something, by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. And don't worry about it, I'm gonna have a look at all the brand new weapons that Fortuna brought us. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. But until next time, my friends, bye bye.